What's going on guys? Today we're going over the crazy spoilers for My Hero Academia Chapter 292, which includes the battle between Shoto and Toyotoroki, as well as Shigaraki waking up, and a very unexpected piece of news regarding Mirio Tagata, aka Lemillion. As usual, these are just the spoilers, so there will be more detail when the official chapter comes out, but until then, this is the best we got. Be sure to hit that sub button for more videos like this, and remember that every Sunday on Twitch, I do a page by page reaction to the official translation, so it will be good to see you there. The title of this chapter is A Ray of Hope, and it starts with a brief flashback to a few minutes earlier, where Best Genius was on the jet and stated his disgust at Dabi turning the whole Todoroki family drama into an issue for the whole of Hero Society. Genus says that he will not let things go Dabi's way, which is then followed by an image in the present day of Gigantomachia being tied up by Genus's steel fiber cables. This is in addition to Dabi himself being tied up, as well as Shigaraki being tied up and Spinner being tied up. Basically, yeah, you get the idea. All the villains are currently restricted by best Genus. Upon seeing Genus, Bakugo jumps out of Ida's arms with a grin on his face. I mean, despite having his stomach impaled, his mentor is finally alive. You know, he's finally got that confirmation because for the last six months or more, you know, Genus has been completely missing. No one even knew if he was alive or dead. So, you know, Bakugo is very happy to see him. Also, this means that Bakugo's hero name will be revealed in the upcoming chapters. So that'll be pretty interesting as well. The scene moves on to Darby, who is visibly shocked that Best Genius is still alive especially as, as Toya literally just told the whole of Japan that Best Genius was dead, so it's kind of just like going directly against what he's told everyone. Back when Dabi first saw the alleged body of Best Genius, he commented how he wasn't sure if it was the real thing. So I guess over time, Dabi just kind of convinced himself that the body must have been real because Hawks is just not able to trick him. In the present day, Toya says to Genius that even though he may be alive, at least the truth about Endeavor is still out there and it can't be taken back. Gigantomachia is still tied up on the ground at this point and Spinner continues his long quest of trying to wake Shigaraki up because only when Shigaraki wakes up can Gigantomachia be given new instructions to, you know, do stuff. Nedre then approaches the villains while preparing to attack but unluckily for her, this is the moment where Shigaraki wakes up and he instantly uses forced quirk activation. Specifically, the Force Quirk activation is used on Darby to activate his flames, which then proceed to fry Nedre in the process, and we see Deku looking up and screaming at the sight of her being attacked like this. Honestly, this was a genius move from Shigaraki, because not only was Nedre dealt with, but it seems like the steel beams that were restricting Darby have now been completely burnt off in the process of his flames activating, so now he's free to move around again. As Nedre falls to the ground, Tenya does manage to swoop in and grab her, but we'll have to wait and see how much she was hurt by those blue flames. Moving on, you remember how early in the war, Shigaraki released a ton of black Nomus that were just running Rampage. According to the spoilers, these Nomu have wiped out more than half the heroes that were sent to stop them, which is then followed by a panel of several unnamed heroes lying on the ground just totally defeated. Four of these black Nomus then attempt to head towards Shigaraki, whilst other heroes like Burnin are trying to stop them. After this, the manga moves over to the Battle of the Todorokis, as Shoto confronts his older brother. He asks Toya why he sent the villain ending to attack Endeavor, even though Natsuo very easily could have been killed in the process. This is a valid question to ask, because Natsuo and Toya used to be very close, so it's kind of odd that Toya would endanger Natsuo's life by sending a villain. According to the unofficial translations, Dabi's response to this is that Natsuo's death would have also caused Endeavor to suffer, so he didn't mind. I gotta stress that this is the unofficial translation, but if it turns out to be accurate, then it truly shows us that Dabi's hatred for his father outweighs pretty much every other emotion he has. You know, he'd be willing to sacrifice his favorite brother just so Endeavor would feel more pain. Shoto accurately says that Toya has just gone crazy to which his brother calmly agrees and says he's finally happy because he can kill Shoto. There was an awesome panel of them both attacking each other whilst activating their flames, which was then followed by Shoto being burned, seemingly losing the battle, whilst Dabi whips out another iconic smile. I don't think this battle is over, but it just seems like Dabi is winning for now. Whilst this goes on, the four Nomu that I mentioned earlier now arrive on the battlefield, 
And Izuku kind of, he sees them and he's telling himself to just get up, he needs to help Best Genus. Earlier in this chapter, Deku wanted to get up so he could help Nejire, but his body just wouldn't allow it. Um, but judging by the way things are going right now, in the next few chapters, it's possible that Deku will surpass his limits and, you know, start fighting again. The chapter ends with something I honestly didn't expect to see in this chapter. And you know what? I thought there would be more build up to it, but I'm happy to see it regardless. As the Nomu approach Genus, we see Mirio's face pop up from the ground as it did when he was first properly introduced to the series. And then he leaps out of the ground and seemingly punches several of the black Nomu right into the sky. That's right people, Lemillion is back and at just the right time. A while back, I did a video on how Lemillion could return and my most likely prediction was that Eri would rewind him at some point. But even I'm surprised that she did it already. I guess Aizawa is a great teacher, so his training with Eri must have gotten her to a point of being able to do this. But still, I was imagining that Mirio was just at home watching the war unfold on TV and just being totally quirkless, not able to help out. Uh, but you know what? Because I love this character, I am happy he's back and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more of him going forward. If you've been watching me for a long time, then you'll know I love this character. I even interviewed the voice, uh, the, the voice actor for Mirio for the English dub. So believe me when I say, I am super happy he's back. I just wasn't expecting it in this chapter. Way back in chapter 246, the final spread of that chapter foreshadowed many things that have already happened and Mirio appeared in one of those panels next to a panel of Eri's horn activating. So um, clearly this return was on Horikoshi's mind for a long time and it's finally come to fruition. Let me know your thoughts down below. Are you happy at the return of Lemillion or do you think it was maybe a little bit too soon? I'd love to see your thoughts on this and also remember that on Sunday I'll be doing a live reaction to the official chapter release so you don't want to miss that. Thanks for watching and until the next one, peace out.